Hi everyone, welcome to a new Begijn of a video. My name is Tommy and it's time again to make a how-to. Um, this time we would like to talk about uh, making pirouettes. Not specifically the pirouettes, how you need to do it in the test, but uh, I would like to talk about the schooling pirouettes. Uh, that's very important to get a lot of control, to improve the canter of your horse. And to be really honest, a good schooling pirouette might be a little bit more difficult than just go on a diagonal and make a small one. Uh, but I think when you are handling the schooling pirouette very well, it, uh, yeah, the pirouette for in the test will be a lot easier. So uh, yeah, I already did my warm up. Uh, we also made videos about how to do uh, the right warm up. You can check it in the link here. Um, so I'm going to start now with the pirouettes. It's very important. Um, first of all that uh, the quality of the canter is good um, in the beginning when you start teaching the horses pirouettes it's not very important that they do it like like really good uh, and what's also very important is that you keep in mind that you your goal is the quality of the canter so for example if you start putting the hunches in uh, that's actually what a pirouette is um, like I told in my previous videos about the lateral movements, uh, it, it's basically uh, yeah, kind of the same thing. You do hunches in on a circle. That's kind of the simple explanation how to do a pirouette. And then if you make a smaller circle or a bigger, then you make the pirouette smaller or bigger. Um, for me, it's very important that when you start teaching the pirouettes, you don't make them too small at first. And you keep in mind that the quality of the canter stays correct, that you have a good uh, quality canter and what I think it's very important um, it should be easy that's actually for me the number one because when it looks easy it looks beautiful so every time when you feel you get in a in a in a moment your horse lost his balance or you feel uh, your horse can't hold the power on the hind legs don't stay in that moment for too long go out go in make variations all the time just feel what your horse tells you to do that's my message in all all the videos so what i most of the time do in the beginning is try to feel if i can have a good circle that i can release my hands that your horse stays in balance that you can go forward and then you go back a little bit on the circle. So you see um, the, the rhythm of the canter with her, it's difficult because she often gets too quick and yeah, I would love to have her some more air time. So this is also not um, a good exercise because we need to do it in the test one time, but schooling pirouettes can really help your horse to have a better quality canter. Okay, so what I do now when I feel it's okay, I test can I release my hand, she stays in balance. I give my outside leg in this case because I'm in the left canter and not my inside leg. So I test it again, can I give, can I go forward, can I have bigger, brav, good, more airtime in the canter. So when that's fine, I will put my, uh, my right leg in this case because I want the hind legs in. I put it back and I put both hands a little bit to the right. So then you see I have here now traverse on a circle. That's basically what a pirouette is. So what you normally do, you put a few steps hind legs in and then you go out when you feel your horse gets in trouble or uh, loses balance. Don't stay in for too long. So you do a few steps, the hind legs in and again uh, it's very important that you try to make your horse do it on their own legs. So if I'm in this circle with the hind legs in, I try to stick my hands forward and actually your horse is not allowed to change. You feel there's, you can see that she lose a little bit of energy and she lost it. So I put my hand forward, I ride a little bit forward with my outside leg, so I get more quality canter in the pirouette. So and then I slow down again then I release my hands and I go forward on the outside leg again ah, good and then I go straight and I try to maintain the rhythm and the balance and everything good I find this my priority number one 
when I want to make a pirouette. Um, if this is easy, you can go to the next step and then you can variate not only in the rhythm and in the speed, but then you can make him smaller and bigger. And uh, you might think, why is it important that you can make it so big? Because you don't need it to make it so big in the test. Well, um, horses are kind of clever. If you do an exercise uh, on a, in a specific way for three times, they, or, they already know what's going on. So what's really important is that um, in a test, uh, of course, horses understand already what's going on. So the horse really needs to wait uh, to your final order to do the exercise. If they are already doing it uh, earlier than you want or later than you want, you will have uh, miscommunication. So I think it's very important and it applies for all exercises you do with your horse. Um, you have to make variation in the exercise itself. So you need to uh, be able to play with the rhythm, with the speed, in this case with the um, uh, with the circle, if you make it smaller or bigger. Uh, all those things, it's very important to have uh, like the optimal control. And also, uh, I don't know about you guys, but if I have to repeat an exercise for more than three times exactly in the same way, I'm getting kind of bored very quickly. So you can make it very interesting for you and your horse in the training to not always do the same thing. So the variation is very, very important. It keeps it nice and easy and more refreshing for your horse. So it won't be like a boring uh, repeating exercise. So the next step I'm going to show you now is going to variate a little bit in the size of the pirouette. If you did the first step on a circle and the rhythm maintains well and it's easy, the next step I do is I bring her back in speed without making the pirouette smaller yet. And then it's very important that she maintain thinking forward so that the hind legs keep going. If that's not the case, I'll go forward so, and I'll go back. So that's the first thing I do. When I can slow down and I can maintain the rhythm and I can like relax my hands and she do the same, I make the pirouette smaller. So I bring her back, I put my hands a little bit to the left. So now it's a few steps small. Now I already lose my rhythm, so I make it bigger again. I put my hands outside and I give outside lag because I want to stay in the pirouette to make it bigger. Now, when I feel I have kind of the control and everything again, I make it a few steps smaller, like I bring her back, and now I make it bigger. And now I make it small, and I make it big. Brav. Okay, good. So when you did that a few times, you can make the pirouette bigger again, and then you're going to go back for the quality because you see I lose a little bit the rhythm and the quality of the canter so I'll go back yeah make it bigger and ask for more canter and when I think okay this is better again I slow down again and there comes the tricky point that she don't make the pirouette small already because I bring her back because that sometimes happens now I lose energy, so I need to go forward and I need to go back. So first I want to bring her back and that she keep having the rhythm and everything fine. When that's good, I make it smaller. Just sit back, put my hands to the left, keep my hands soft. Once I'm in a small pirouette, I try to like let go of my hands and that she needs to stay like this. So uh, yeah, if you do it to the left, you need to do it to the right as well. It's uh, very important that you develop both sides of your horses. I think to the right, it will be a little bit easier with her. As you can see, it's not really perfect yet, but I'm going to explain you a little bit later what you can do more. Okay, so first we, we do like a bigger circle, hunches in, must be easy. Can I slow down? Can I release my hands? Can I go forward? Brav, okay. You see the rhythm, it's not like really perfect yet. She's too quick in the rhythm. I will get in the, into that in a second. 
and I want her to, to get sit more. So this, then you bring her more back, relax your hands. Now I give left leg. If she gives a good reaction on my leg, she will going to sit more. Um, therefore, she also needs to have more strength and power in the hind legs. So I know I'm not there yet, but I know when I continuing practicing this kind of schooling pirouettes, she will get stronger and eventually that will get better. So when I feel now this is kind of okay, I bring her back again. First, without smaller, without making the pirouette smaller, because I don't want the horse to think to turn already when I bring her back. When she waits, I test, can I relax my hands? Does she stay the same? If the answer is yes, then I'll going to turn more. I keep the hind legs on the same place. Now I lose a little bit balance, but the canter steps become a little bit slower, which I actually like in her case, because she's too quick. That's also what you can do. You can play a little bit with the rhythm, try to make her like, so, like a kind of lazy in this case. Yeah, and then speed her up, make it quicker and make her lazy again. So, brav, good. And then when I make her lazy, I don't care a little bit about the quality of the canter, but see now she gets too relaxed, that's fine. I just want her to focus more on me and then I can make her like slow, slow, and I don't mind if she make a mistake. I want her to pay attention to me. Brav. And when she listens, I'll speed her up again and again. And I can do it more and more. So, brav. And then I can slow down again. What you also can do, if it's difficult and you want her to go to sit, you can also decide to make a transition to walk. See, and then it's going to get a little bit more difficult. But making those varieties in all your elements, in all your exercises, is getting the body and mentally more focused on you and more strong. So, now when you think it's kind of okay, I mean it's not perfect yet, but it's fine, then you're going to make the pirouette a little bit smaller. And then sit back. Yeah, now I try to make the rhythm a little bit slower without losing. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Now I have some good steps, I make it bigger again. Then I can activate her more. Brav. And I go to walk. And you see, the go to walk is the most difficult because then she really has to sit. So in her case, that would be a very good solution to practice more to make transitions in a schooling pirouette. That was good to canter. And I go to walk again. That's much better. That's better. Oh, now she turns too quick. Okay, and then I go to canter again. Yeah, and then I go to walk again. And then I go to canter again. Oh, that was not good. See, so find those things, what is difficult and try to make that easy. Then the quality of the pirouette and the control gets much better. Brav. Yeah, so you see, it's uh, uh, for me also difficult to do it like this, but I love to, to make the exercise doing like this because I think when it's easier in a kind of a schooling pirouette, it will be much easier to make a smaller pirouette at the end. So uh, my focus is not to practice the small pirouettes like it needs to be in the test, but my focus is how can I optimize the control and the strength and the flexibility of your horse by doing all these different kind of variations in the exercise itself. So actually what we discussed um, in, our, in, in our previous how-to videos, eh, how to make good transitions, you need to be able to make the right transitions, even if it's in the canter itself, 
uh, and the variation to keep it interesting for you and your horse so it won't be like a boring kind of exercise. If you do it like this, it will be less boring. <laughs> Um, yeah, so as you can see, it's not perfect yet, um, but this is uh, yeah what we're working uh, on uh, right now at the moment, and uh, yeah, hopefully when it go a, be a little bit better in a few months, I will keep you updated. Yeah, so guys, uh, thank you for watching this video. Like always, if you have any questions regarding this subject, uh, yeah, leave it down in the comments. I will be happy to answer it. I hope you you like this video. If you do, leave a thumbs up. And uh, if you like our channel and if you want to make us more of those videos, then definitely don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you think, hmm, I missed the other one, there is a notification bell next to this uh, subscribe button. So if you hit that button, you definitely won't miss a video from us. Thank you for now. See you next video. Bye bye.